It started as an idea out of what some would call desperation. Jackie came home to me after I have complained for um, a long time, not being able to see kids and spend quality time with family. And she said, um, well, let's just sell everything and buy a bus. And that idea grew into a dream that some would say was outrageous. RVs are a funny thing. Everybody has a, a, a different purpose for what they're going to use it for. And so you have to find pretty much what we had to do is find out what worked for us uh, based on what we were going to do. And that was basically travel um, four times a year and stay two or three or four months in each place. When the time came, the courage came to live life on their own terms. We opened our house up on one of our garage sales and sold. People came in and bought everything off the walls and curtains and furniture, everything. They made new lifelong friends. There are some people that you just totally connect with, like you've always known them. And it's funny how that happens. I mean, I never thought about it until we went out on the road and did this. But uh, the first park, there were several couples there that we just connected with right away. They were full-time RV people doing the same thing that we were doing only for different reasons. And became closer than they ever thought they could be. I had read on a couple of the RV forums that um, some people were having um, a very much increased relationships with their spouse when they were out doing this. And I thought, you know, that would be kind of cool, but it really happens, and it's, it's amazing. We're having a ball. Mm-hmm. job with the airlines was very stressful would yeah. you say yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean sometimes you'd come in to pick up jackie and you were all frazzled mm-hmm. and you were flying from point a to point b and then dealing with the ter- people with the terminals and the airlines and negotiating and unions and things and, and you look totally different i mean yeah. all that has just gone away from you. I I actually think that you've probably you've probably gained at least 10 years on your life. Well, because that's cool. Because you don't look 70. Welcome to Commando On Demand, where we keep you in the know on everything digital. And if you've ever dreamed of buying a motorhome and traveling off in the distance, traveling across the country when you retire, we have a very special treat for you today. We've done a couple podcasts on Jackie and Hal and their travels, and specifically what kind of gadgets that they use to keep them safe and economical as they travel around the country in their huge motorhome. It's a Jackie and Hal update today, next on Commando On Demand. And a quick reminder here, this is not the Kim Commando Show. Every week, Kim gives you the very latest tech news, the tips, the DIYs, and of course, we take your questions on the Kim Commando Show, and there is a podcast for that. It's easy to get, and you can find out more information on it by going to getkim.com. That's getkim.com. All right, our Jackie and Hal update is next on Commando On Demand. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. All right, welcome back to Commando On Demand. Without further ado, it's a Jackie and Hal update. Here's Kim. If you ever walk around the Kim Commando Show studios, over in IT, there's a really great guy by the name of Jeremy, and he's in charge of all things digital in the studios and the server room, too. And today, as I was walking by his desk, I looked at him and said, Jeremy, what's today's question? You see, every day we have a, would you rather do this or that question? Well, Today's question that he poses to everybody in the studios, would you rather spend a whole month in a sub 
or would you rather spend a whole month in an RV? But here's the deal. With the sub, you get a dinghy, and with the RV, you get a little go-kart. So which would you prefer? I voted for the RV, which leads me to Jackie and Hal, my good friends, as they've been traveling the country. We've had them on Kim Commando Show podcasts several times because, you know, Jackie was my wonderful assistant for over 10 years. And I still regret the day that I walked in and she was crying. Well, she wasn't crying because I said anything. She was crying because she was going to miss me. Did you believe that she was actually going to miss me? So over the years, of course, we've kept in touch because Jackie was more than just, well, my assistant. Jackie was my best friend, and I love Jackie. And along with her comes handsome Hal, of course, her husband. And Hal just loves Jackie, too. So between the two of us, we always say, like, who loves Jackie more? I'm convinced I do, but she says it's probably him. So for the last six years, Jackie and Hal have been driving and enjoying their lives in an RV. And from time to time, they come by the studios and they give us an update. So here they are, fabulous Jackie and Hal, the RV couple of the decade. So since we spoke a year ago, Jackie and Hal, what was the greatest thing that you got yourselves out of? You got yourself into a predicament and you looked at each other and you said, oh, what do we do now? Okay, so I'll take that. I'll take that. So... Last year before we left here, um, we had a little a bit of an issue with the bus, and it had to do with the alignment of the front end. And we decided that before we went on our adventure this year, that we would take it to a shop here in uh, Phoenix and have the front end aligned. It seems like a real simple concept, right? Well, we get the, the bus in there, and they take a look at it, and they said, oh, my gosh, hell no. Your whole bus is out of alignment, (laughs) and we're going to have to start with the tag axle, which is behind the drive axle, and then the drive axle, and then the front axle, and we're going to have to align all of that before you can go. So what I thought was going to be a simple front end alignment turned into a pretty major project. How much money are we talking? Oh, we're talking a couple of grand. Wow. Okay, so... The process, part of that process was uh, the front end being out of a line had scuffed off one of the front tire, the drive, the steering tire. And so I told the guys, I said, take that tire off, put it in the back and give me another tire up front. And so uh, they swapped it, but they couldn't swap the one I wanted, but they swapped one off the back axle on the inside and they put those tires up front. They're just like brand new right? The tires are only five years old. And so down the road we go. We had it all fixed. Oh, we were so happy. We got ready to hook up at our park here in uh, uh, Chandler. And when I went around to do the air pressure checks on the tire, uh, lo and behold, I had a flat tire. (laughs) And it was on that inside tire that they had just remounted for me. No problem. It's only a weekend, and so we can have somebody come out and pull that tire off and do what they have to do. No problem. I'm trying to make this as short as possible because it's a great story. <laughs> I'm getting, you know, I'm getting long on the tire here. I know, right? So this guy comes out, he repairs it, and down the road we go. We get into Iowa. My lovely wife is sitting over in the navigator seat, and uh, she looks at me and she said. Al, I smell rubber. And I'm going, oh, it's got to okay. be somebody else. Okay. Right. Ne- yeah. Never never a good thing to say in an RV. No. I mean, and you don't even think about, is it our rubber? Because we're going down the road. We're getting air through the front. I mean, you know, how are you going to? She said, Hal, we need to stop and check. Lo and behold, that same tire had blown the hole about the size of a softball, and it was flat again. So now... We have to take our spare out of the trailer, have the guy, oh, and it's a weekend again, right? <laughs> so of course get, it is. It's oh, a Sunday morning. <laughs> right. And so the guy comes out and fixes it. The challenge is now, here we are in um, northern Iowa, almost in Wisconsin. And, and there are I, a lot of RV tire places up and down that road, I'm oh, sure. It's, uh, you, oh, it's, they're just every two or three miles. But you're Not, forgetting, I know. You're forgetting one so. part, and that is when I said that to you, that I smell rubber, something's hot, you, you kind of ignored it, Hal. 
<laughs> Didn't you? Okay. There's yeah. a life lesson there, Hal. Uh, yeah. Well, she, uh, there's, so, a, there's this happened to us before. So instead of getting off the, no, you got off on a ramp, right? Yeah. But you on didn't exit. turn. You didn't turn on the road. You went back right. on the ramp to go back on the interstate. Right. Whoa. Then you found out that the tire was flat and there was a big hole. So what did you have to do? Well, I just because you couldn't turn around. No, I just had to back all the way back up uh-huh. there and then make a left-hand turn. Was that fun? Well, when you're seventy feet long, it isn't too bad. You had a trailer and there was oncoming traffic. <laughs> okay, okay, we, we, I understand. Okay, and you, <laughs> Jackie was I right. Okay, I understand. Jackie was right. How you were wrong. Okay. That's the way it works. <laughs> okay, so you got it all fixed. You're on the road. Everything's all honky dory. But I think we should describe. The bus. Okay, tell us about your rig. I mean, you 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 sold everything that you could, anything that wasn't nailed in that house six years ago. You've taken all the money, you put it into a bus. Now you two are in love more so than ever before, which I don't know if I could spend six years in a bus with my husband. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, tell us about it. Well, the bus that we travel in is 45 feet long. Um, it has four slide outs, two in the bedroom, one in the kitchen on the passenger side, and one on the driver's side, which is our living room. And so we equate to about 600 and I don't know, I'm guessing 60 square feet, 600, a little over 600 feet, uh, square feet in our little apartment, basically. And so that's what we live in. And it's big enough, to your point, that Jackie can be in one end of the bus, and I can be in the other end of the bus, and we don't have to look at each other for five <laughs> minutes. And the other good news is where we go, we, we, we are sun chasers. So we like to be where the weather is warm. And I spend a tremendous amount of time outdoors mm-hmm. sitting on the patio. For sure, It's got a beautiful awning that comes out uh, that's 25 feet long and goes out about 10 feet. And we've got our little patio set up out there, uh, and I spend a lot of time out there. Now, is there anything on the bus that you wish that it had that it does not have? I a regular size, a regular size oven. <laughs> That's I because miss... you you know what you're a fabulous baker. You are. Thank you. I you are amazing. Although oven. I told you, you are an. I I texted Jackie this the other day. I said, you are an evil woman. (laughs) Evil. She brought over a cake. I never eat cake. I mean, Mike James, our tech director, he's sitting there. He can attest to this. People bring sweets in all the time here at the studios. Pizza pizza and cake. Never never touch it. Don't. I don't even take a taste of it. (laughs) Okay. She brings over a cake. I had like a full slice. What? Okay. Then I immediately went upstairs on my Peloton. Evil woman. So she would like a bigger oven. Is there nothing that she would like? Maybe a jacuzzi or something like that, Hal? No, I think, for the most part, I think we do pretty well. Um, uh, I I can't even imagine anything that we don't have that we really need. I mean, to I mean, Jackie's I- point, she would love to have a, a regular size oven. She she cooks in a microwave convection oh, oven. That's tough. There's, there's an art to that. And she's yeah. very good at it. But <laughs> she's gotten very, very technical as she has gone through the years of her baking experience. And um, there are things about that oven that uh, kind of tend to dig on her a little bit. So there's no way you could put a full-size oven in there? Not without losing storage. I think you need a smart oven. That's what I think. Well, there you go. Get a smart oven, yes. You know, I don't know if you saw uh, the new Samsung refrigerators. And you might want to look at the new Samsung ovens, but the new Samsung refrigerators and ovens, they are, they allow you to customize the size so that this way you're not standard on, you know, you need to have this particular size. Like, so like, for example, the Samsung refrigerators I'm looking at for the house that we're building is that instead of buying an expensive Sub-Zero is that these refrigerators go for floor to ceiling, but you can customize it to say like, I want the drink refrigerator here. I'd like the vegetable compartment here, and I'd like 
the the milk and the orange juice over here. So you can compartmentize it. And then the same thing with the freezers. They also have a full-size refrigerator that's not a refrigerator that allows you to grow your own produce at home. Oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. That's amazing. So it comes with all the sensors and it waters it automatically, gives you all the lighting that you might need. And I thought, hey, you know what? Now that's a garden yeah. I could do. That yeah. was, that's yeah. cool. If you have a question about something digital, don't forget you can get advice from the most trusted voice in America on everything digital, America's Digital Pro, Kim Commando. So go to commando.com and in the upper right-hand corner, just click on Be a Caller. Again, that's commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Give us your digital question and then leave us a few details about that question and a producer will get back in touch with you and you can join us on the Kim Commando Show. More of the Commando On Demand Jackie and How Update is coming up in moments and we're going to talk about some of the challenges that uh, driving the bus offers and, of course, the technology available on the newer motorhomes in just a few moments. Welcome back to Commando On Demand and our conversation with the now experts in selling everything they own and enjoying life on the open road. It's our Jackie and Hal update. Here's Kim. You picked out the right RV, the right bus for you guys that you've been in for six years. Is it getting old? Um, For me, no, Jackie. I would update it. And what would you update it with? I'd rip all the carpeting out, um, probably redo the floors. So do like a basic remodel. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. How much would a remodel cost? Oh, gosh, I have no idea. I know. It's kind of tricky doing floors in there because you have the slides that come out. So they're sitting just slightly higher than the main floor going down the center of the bus. So, I mean, not just anybody could go in there and do it. We'd have to find somebody to do it. It's a bit tricky, yeah. So, Jackie, do you drive the bus? I have once. Yes, never never again? It scared me to death. Actually, I was in a very large parking lot, wasn't I, Hal? <laughs> I, I probably could do it as long as... I couldn't do it in real heavy traffic, but I could do it out on the open highway. How do you drive this bus? Like, for example, over the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. <laughs> well, we've only done that once, and uh, I'm not excited about doing it. And as you know, the, uh, the the lanes on the Golden Gate are very narrow, and that bus just fits in those lanes. And so mm-hmm. um, the key to me is in driving this thing, Jackie has asked me several times about this, how do you explain that? It, very cautiously. But you have to keep up with the traffic, and you have to plan way ahead. The, the bus weighs, we probably weigh over 60,000 pounds, total bus wow. and trailer with the car in it. Okay? So that's a lot to stop in a short period of time. So you've always got to be watching way ahead, planning way ahead, And then just staying with the traffic and not finding yourself where you're trying to pass people or you're forced with people passing you because you're going too slow. I try to use the center lanes uh, so that people can get by on both sides. I don't have to worry about merging traffic. I mean, there's just a lot of little things that you learn along the way uh, with a big rig like that. Now, the truck drivers, obviously, they're, they're working with the same kinds of issues. And so those guys, when they get in an RV... It's a piece of cake for them. But somebody that's never driven an RV before, it takes time. And you have to take your time. You have to be patient. You've got to plan ahead. And don't go over your limits. If you know what your limits are, don't go over them. And um, Now, do you, in the in the bus, do you have the technology like lane changing assist? No. Now, the, the newer, the newer <laughs> it's ones. Called Jackie. It's called me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the newer ones do. Uh, my son and his wife, they just bought a new bus. And it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's totally high tech. And that's why he bought it. He's a tech freak also. And he wanted everything electronic. He wanted all the latest in gadgetry. His bus right now is sitting here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, he's doing a project in France right now. And in France, he can get on his phone and adjust the temperature on his bus that's sitting here in Phoenix. Awesome. Right? I mean, this is the kind of technology. His bus has the side lane things, and it has the front-to-back cameras, uh, cameras, and it it does the whole thing. I mean, it's amazing. So the newer units that are out there that are coming out do have that technology, but mine does, ours does not. Do you think you might need that at some point? 
No, I mean, it's handy to have because you know when there are people beside you. But quite frankly, the mirrors that we've got and I, I know where people are. I drive as much in the mirrors as I do out the front. So I know when people are coming from behind me, I, I pretty much know. I mean, I can only think of one time where I've started to do a lane change and there was somebody in my sm- very small little dark spot. See, that, that's interesting to me because the other day I was driving the G-Wagon and I was taking it from my mother's place out to the gate. And Barry was in the driver's seat. And so I'm backing the G-Wagon out. And I didn't even notice the way that I drive this G-Wagon in reverse. I don't even look out the windows. I look just at the screen and I have the 360 cam and I'm just driving, uh, backing up like probably 20 miles an hour. And Barry looks at me and goes, you're not even looking out the window. And I said, well, why do I need to? I have the 360 cam. See, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine driving something like what you guys do without any technology. Uh, It would be nice. It would be nice. Yeah, it would. All right. So uh, logistics, let's cover some of the logistics. Are you still getting your mail in where, South Dakota? Yes. And why is that? Well, we don't really have a home address. So the first thing we need, obviously, for the purposes of insurance, uh, for the purposes of voting, uh, for all other purposes associated, uh, you need to have a home mailing address. And so because we don't live anywhere, uh, South Dakota is one of four states that provide a non-resident to have a permanent address. And so all of our mail goes to that address in South Dakota. Now, do they scan it? And so they give you the ability to open it remotely at all or no? Uh, They do have that service available, but we don't have enough mail that any with that that is any of substance that we would need to do that. I don't, I don't. It's all junk mail? For the most part. (laughs) We do everything electronically. I mean, uh, since we've updated our internet Situation. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's, what are you doing yeah, for internet we, now? You know, we, we still find ourselves in places where our hotspot is weak on our on our phones and or um, we use a little bit of data. You know, when Jackie's working and I'm working and we're both on our laptops and we use a lot of data. And so our hotspots, we were hitting our max and so we were having to spend money for extra data. So we shopped around and we found a company that has a little box that all it does is uh, pick up satellite internet and we plug that baby into the bus and now we have, Jackie can have nonstop internet going down the road. We have no uh, blank spots. How much is it? Uh, We spend, I think, $60 a month. And then do you get like 50 gigs? 50 gigs. Okay. And so are you doing any type of streaming with that at all? No. Yeah, because you're going you're gonna to blow through that in no time at all. Yeah, no, we don't do any streaming. We have satellite TV, so uh, <clears throat> what little TV we do watch, we get off the satellite. What other kind of payments do you have when you have a bus? What is that, what is that product called? What is the streaming product called? Um, I don't know if you want me to tell you that or not. What is it? It's an AT. It's AT and T Wireless. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's all right. So, so you got yours from AT and T Wireless, and you right. know many providers have them. Yes. So, what other kind of bills do you have when you're on the road? Well, obviously, you have your normal living expenses. Um, you have fuel, and you'll have. Do you have to buy a special type of fuel? Oh, you buy diesel fuel. Uh, we use the truck stops for the most part. So we line up behind the semis and and get in line to get our fuel. So how does the price of diesel, because I don't buy it, how much, how does the price of diesel compare to regular? You know, that's a great question because it varies throughout the country. In some parts of the country, diesel fuel is 10 or 15 cents less than regular fuel, unleaded, right? You get to other parts of the country (laughs) and it's 15 or 20 cents higher. Why is that? Unleaded fuel, and I wish I knew the answer to that. I don't. Supply and demand. I probably so. Now, of course, state lines have a lot to do with it. 
you know, hang on to your wallet when you hit the California state line. Boy, isn't that the truth? Right? Really? Wow. I mean, you're looking in some in some instances, we were paying almost a buck a gallon more for diesel mm-hmm. in California than we did That's in crazy. Wisconsin. No, everything's crazy in California. I didn't realize the price difference. I thought Hawaii was expensive. Oh, nothing compared to getting to the state of California. Well, you know, with a state tax alone of 43 cents, I mean, come on. That's true. Plus, right. you, we do get a discount on fuel sometimes if we use the right places through Good Sam. Right. How does that work? We just have a card. You have to be a member of Good Sam. And then when you go, I can't remember which place it is. But so good, is, is Good Sam like a traveling club, like AAA for RVers? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then do you get discounts on when you do when you do any type of hookups as well? Yes. And so how much does it cost for this thing? We pay yearly. Um, it's not that much. I want to say maybe, oh, I'm going to take a stab at it, maybe 49 50 bucks. All right. So it's definitely worth it then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and just get... the whole mapping system on their app is very helpful when we're traveling. Okay, so tell us about some places you've stayed in the last year. Well, nothing really unusual this last year. We have a new spot where we stay in California that we just absolutely love. Um, we are just north of Santa Cruz, California. Beautiful. And so we're kind of in the middle between Santa Cruz and San Francisco. Our kids, obviously, are in San Francisco, so it makes an easy run right up Highway 1. We're right across Highway 1 from the water. <laughs> nice. And we can walk out. Jackie can walk out the door. <clears throat> People and, pay like $20 million for that view. Right? Mm, yeah. For sure. Jackie can walk out the door of the bus and on the steps of the bus, look out to see if there is any whale activity out there. And she loves love whale activity. Where else have you guys stayed? In Wisconsin, it's kind of a whole different scene. It's just a small park that's family owned on a small lake and it's really family environment there kids are fishing you can jump in the lake and swim Uh, it's all tucked in a bunch of pine trees a lot of uh, wild animals it's just very quiet very back to nature (laughs) well see but that's what's great i mean you guys can go from one environment to the next see parts of this family parts of that family right and then you have everything with you Okay, you know, when I bought my first second home, uh, a friend of mine said to me, you know, you're going to love this because when you now travel, you get on the airplane, you don't need to carry anything with you, which I think is really phenomenal. Okay, you could just like, if I want to go to Maui, I just take my laptop and I go, which I could see that there's a real benefit when you're in the RV that everything that you need is just right there. Yeah, you can change your view. Yeah, and I was just going to bring that up. Jackie's famous saying is, if I get tired of the view out the front window, we just move, you know, and you've got a brand new view. And for me, I get to sleep in my own bed every night. Which is very, very nice. And with your bride. Right. (laughs) Exactly. All right, so you've been on the road for six years. What are some big lessons that you wish that you knew earlier that now it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I can do that? Well, I think... I think for for me personally, um, I take care of pretty much budget stuff, <clears throat> and budgeting is very very important when people just decide to get into this. And we don't really think of it like we should. I mean, you think of it, and you're told that before you ever start out, you're going to have maintenance. Make sure you prepare yourself for uh, mechanical things. Um, that I wish we'd have done a better job with. Um, uh, we've gotten hit with a couple of issues. Uh, the one I told you about with the tire thing. I mean, when you get hit like that, you're retired. So your income is limited. Right. Um, and you don't plan for that. Uh, I read a, a, a blog here just not too long ago where the guy just was so adamant about make sure that you're putting money away every month for even routine maintenance. I mean, routine maintenance on our bus For oil and filter changes, you're talking about 800 bucks. Wow. Really? Well, it holds 32 quarts of oil. (sighs) Hello. (laughs) Right? I'm sorry. That was stupid. Yeah. Yeah, The air filter alone is $150. I mean, so you have to plan for that. Now, people, I don't want to have people scare people out from doing this. 
it's just like a home if you think about it. You're going to have expenses that are similar uh, to a home. And right. It's not like these are hit. You're hit with these every day or even once a year. Yeah. So AC maintenance, hydro hot maintenance, generator maintenance. Uh, Al does a lot of it himself. That's good because you know anytime I hear maintenance, I hear yeah. like cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Exactly. Right. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately. <laughs> We probably didn't do as good as we could have done in that area as far as budgeting for that. Now, you ask about expenses. I mean, you've got a lot of costs you're going down, even going, even traveling. You know, you've got to think about those parks you're going to stay in along the way, unless you're just going to do Walmart. Uh, but no, <laughs> you've got to plan for that kind of stuff. Why not Walmart? We did one time. Well, maybe twice. Walmart. Um, Walmart was Well, you'll see different types of whales. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was thinking of Wisconsin. (laughs) (laughs) Supper clothes. Supper clothes in Wisconsin. (laughs) Yeah. They grow a lot of wings out there. Um, Keeping up to date with breaking news, security alerts, data breaches, and so much more is difficult enough these days, but now you can do it. It's the free commando newsletters. Get yours at commander.com. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And on the top, click on Get the Newsletters, and you've got it. More of the Commando on Demand Jackie and Hal updates still to come, including some of the mistakes that they've made along the way. And after six years on the road, what does their future hold? Next on Commando on Demand. This week on the Commando on Demand podcast, we're listening to an update for Jackie and Hal. Jackie was Kim's assistant many years ago. And here's part three of this week's interview. All right. So you so you find the all the great places to stay along the way. Are there any are there any key points that you want to look for? So like if I'm driving down the road, what am I looking for in my book or online? That's going to be how do I know it's going to be a great spot? It depends on how you do it. My son told me when we first started this, don't make reservations in advance. I mean, so many people, and we talk to them all the time. Mm -hmm. So many people, they book all, they take a two-week vacation, and they book all the sites they're going to go to before they ever leave home. Well, there's one big problem with that, and we found out (laughs) very quickly on our very first trip, when we left Phoenix, Arizona, we got into Utah, We had reservations the very next day in Colorado. Utah was so beautiful. And Jackie Mm -hmm. and I both agreed, oh, my gosh, we should be able to stay here for a few days. You know what? That's a a really good point because this past summer, Ian and I went on a car trip. We started in Lake Como. We went up to Bellagio. And then we we drove through the Swiss Alps, went down up like four to 14,000 feet, went down. Uh, into Germany and then went on the Autobahn, which Ian was driving on the Autobahn was a whole nother story. And I thought to myself, this is one of those bad parenting moments that you have. And we ended up in Baden-Baden, but we're going to do it again this year. But one of the things that both of us looked at each other as we're talking about and we're planning it is that we don't want to be tied that way, right? Because I wanted to spend more time in Lake Como. Ian wanted to spend more time in the Swiss Alps. And then when we couldn't, because we had to keep going to the next place. Somebody I know was making reservations for you. <laughs> Which, you know, thank God for Jackie, because I don't know what I would do without you, Jackie. That's why, you know, every time you're saying, like, you know, maybe, maybe I, ought to, you know, I ought to train somebody to do this. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. You remember, you got maintenance on that bus, girlfriend. That's right. That's right. Very important. Uh, so... Anything else that you learned about driving? Um, no, you know, it's it's just uh, you have to be patient and enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, learn about the bus. I mean, the bus is going to react. Uh, you get in different parts of the country, different environments, uh, where your road conditions are a little bit different. In Iowa, you go up and down hills like all the time. Uh, one of the things I had uh, problems with initially was I'd set the thing on cruise control at 72, I mean at 65, and down the road we would go, 
but in Iowa on all those hills, I was finding us overheating a little bit. And so trying to figure that out, I found out that if I just drop it down a gear into fifth gear and keep the RPMs a little bit higher, that it would run cool. So little things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that would be particular to the bus, too. And it's particular to the bus. So we're speaking of learning, so where are some great resources that people can go online? My number one resource is IRV2.com. That group of people, and it's a huge group, they've got a a great number of people on that forum. Um, What's cool about it is that There are a bunch of different categories, but very specific, one whole section on your bus. In other words, if you own Brand Z bus, you can go to the Brand Z section and you can talk to all the people that have a Brand Z bus and they'll tell you everything you need to know, whether it's from a brand new perspective or something that nobody has ever heard of happening before. And you learn so much. I was so thankful for that Mm -hmm. website. When we first started, I spent two years on that website before we ever bought the bus. Wow, that's a long time. You know, but I'm on it even still today because guess what? I get to give back to some of these guys Mm -hmm. that helped us out. I mean, and that's what the forum is all about. We help each other, and um, it's very interesting. And there's a lot of fun topics on that forum as well. But you can learn so much. Uh, they have a whole section of about full timers, mm-hmm. and so you can gain some knowledge if you're thinking about doing full time. That will really help you out. Have you met a lot of people on the road? Oh yes, <laughs> tons. Yeah, I mean people that you are, people that you've become friends with. Yes. Yeah. The one couple we met uh, almost from the get go in Loveland, Colorado. These folks were from, I believe, New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a man and his wife, they owned some property in Colorado, but they were never there. They had a beautiful fifth wheel mm-hmm. and, a, and a truck that was custom made to pull the fifth wheel. And in the back of that, they had one of those little smart cars <laughs> in the back of their fifth wheel trailer. And they were just the coolest people you ever want to. And we're still in contact with those that's guys nice. after you know, all that's these good. years. Now, we haven't seen them mm-hmm. since then. Only on Facebook. But we, yeah. we talk to each other all the time on Facebook. And being from New York, he had a wonderful sense of humor. I mean, boy, he, he <laughs> if you didn't have a little bit of a thick skin, he, you, you wouldn't be able to talk to him. Probably. But you've been around me for all these years. You should oh, know yeah, that. But you're a piece of cake, Mr. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> he, was, he was good, but he's a great guy. Uh, tons of people. Well, I'm sure you have a lot in common with folks as you go around. Yeah, you really do. Uh, really that's do. nice. So, so what's next on the Hal and Jackie Great Adventure? Well, as far as we know, we think we're leaving Arizona maybe the second week of April and headed toward Colorado. We won't be there very long, and then we'll head toward Wisconsin because we have a family member that is getting married, and I get to do the wedding cake. Oh, how Yay. wonderful. And this year that trip will be exciting because we get to travel uh, with our son and his wife who are from Wisconsin. They now are first-time winter folks in Phoenix, (laughs) and they're they're loving every minute of it. And we have traveled with them uh, a time or two before, and they are so much fun to travel. It's like a caravan. Almost. Almost. I've got pictures I can show you. So when do you think the road will stop? Well, not this year. (laughs) That's a good question. As far as I'm concerned, when they have to carry me out of the bus because I'm not breathing anymore. I love that answer. I mean, I don't want that to happen to you. No, I but understand I think, that. But if you're so passionate that you want to do something, and this is the way that it, you know, this is what makes you guys happy. You know what? All the power to you. Well, this is, this for me now, this is home, right? Uh, people ask me all the time, well, what's going to happen when you get too old to drive the bus? So if I'm too old to drive the bus, I'm not breathing because I will stay in shape and I will keep my. Now, when Jackie says, you're scaring the hell out of me. I smell rubber and it's us. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Smell. Actually, it smells like gasoline. So, I don't know. but yeah, no, I'll, I'll you know, go as long as we can go. Well, one of the things that when I think back on the last five and a half years doing or six years doing this 
is it really does keep you in a healthier mode, I think, because we're always doing something. Right. We're not sitting around, sitting around, watching house. TV, exactly. moping around. Exactly. We're always doing something. And a lot of the parks we stay at, we help. So I think it keeps you very active, very alert. Well, more healthy. you guys look fabulous. Oh. You do. Well, thank you. You really do. I mean, Jackie, you look so beautiful. I was looking at you at dinner the other night. And (laughs) handsome, I always think you're just so handsome. You know that. And just always remember, anytime you need a place to stay, there's always a room for you in my home. Thank you. Just don't bring a cake. (laughs) Again. Don't make it. Evil woman. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for listening to the Commando On Demand podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give us a thumbs up and, of course, share this. If you know somebody who's planning on doing some RVing in the future, it helps more people find us. And we thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time on Commando On Demand.